A telephone call was held between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the Grand Imam of Al Azhar and Chairman of the Muslim Council of Elders, His Eminence Dr. Ahmed Al Tayyib, to discuss perspectives on humanitarian challenges and Islamic issues. During the call, His Majesty and the Grand Imam emphasized the importance and necessity of dialogue among all Muslims, noting that Bahrain will host the Intra Muslim Dialogue Conference early next year. They affirmed the need to unite the Muslim community and promote solidarity among its diverse components in the face of common challenges. His Majesty the King expressed appreciation for the efforts of the Grand Imam in serving Islam and Muslims and his role in promoting the principles of Islam and the contributions of Al-Azhar in supporting Arab and Islamic causes. For his part, the Grand Imam expressed gratitude for His Majesty's initiative to host this significant Islamic conference in Bahrain and commended His Majesty's efforts in serving Islam, fostering peace and coexistence, reinforcing the culture of dialogue and supporting the Palestinian cause. He also expressed al Azhar's pride in its strong relations with Bahrain, affirming the need for community and humanity to unite the efforts of leaders to bring peace to the region and the world. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa directed the Ministry of Education to hold an induction day across public schools to brief parents and guardians on the new academic year. His Royal Highness instructed the Ministry of Education to take all the necessary preparations to provide an educational environment that encourages public schools and students to excel in their studies. He highlighted the importance of initiatives that further develop the kingdom's educational system to prepare students for the labor market. His Royal Highness concluded by wishing students, teachers and administrators a successful new academic year. The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Dana, participated in the plenary session of the Russian Tatarstan Oil and Gas Conference, Modern Challenges and Priority Solutions for Reproduction uh, Hydrocarbon Mineral Resources Base, held in Kazakhstan, Tatarstan, under the chairmanship of the President of Tatarstan. The minister highlighted Bahrain's key oil projects, particularly those executed by Babco Energies, such as the Babco Modernization Program. The strategic project aims to increase refining capacity and enhance product offerings, making the refinery one of the most competitive and environmentally compliant globally. The president of Tatarstan, Rastam Manikhanov, met with the Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Dana, on the sidelines of the Russian Tatarstan Oil and Gas Conference. They discussed further enhancing bilateral cooperation in the energy and environment sectors to benefit both countries. The meeting reviewed a prominent developments and strategic projects in the oil and gas sector along with environmental initiatives aimed at reducing and removing carbon emissions and efforts to enhance energy security, sustainability and climate preservation in addition to strengthening partnerships in future projects. The Minister of Youth Affairs, Rawan Tawfiqi, participated in the high-level global forum on youth, peace and security in Amman, held under the patronage of the Crown Prince of Jordan, His Royal Highness, Prince Lehsein bin Abdullah II. During the forum, the Arab Strategy for Youth, Peace and Security 2023-2028 to was launched. The strategy aims to amplify youth involvement in international peace and security efforts, urging Arab member states to explore means to boost youth involvement in shaping the future at all levels. Tawfiqi emphasized that the launch of this strategy is the result of joint Arab efforts to empower young people to support peace and security across the region. The strategy provides Arab youth with a platform for active participation and positive contribution to development, peace and security, offering them the opportunity to implement their initiatives and projects.
The Minister of Education, Dr. Mohammed Jum'a, confirmed that implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to hold an induction day in the public school for parents. The Ministry of Education started taking the necessary measures to implement His Royal Highness's directives so that the public schools will host students and their parents on September 2nd and 3rd. The minister noted that the ministry will announce the details of the implementation of the introduction induction days, which will include receiving parents by members of the educational and administrative bodies in public schools, providing them with the necessary explanation about the most important milestones of the academic year, introducing schools and their systems, in addition to receiving the induction file for each student, which includes useful content, important information, purchase vouchers and offers. He expressed thanks and appreciation for the continuous cooperation of parents with educational institutions for the success of the academic year and emphasized the importance of community partnership with the private sector in the smooth launch of the new academic year. The King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence signed a Memorandum of Cooperation with Faith and Leadership, FIL, and the 1928 Institute affiliated with Oxford University in London to launch the King Hamad Leadership for Peaceful Coexistence program. The chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Center, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, hailed the visions of His Majesty the King for spreading religious and humanitarian values and advancing global harmony and peaceful coexistence. Dr. Sheikh Abdullah noted the importance of this partnership which further strengthens Bahrain-UK relations and promotes peaceful coexistence and interfaith dialogue. He emphasized the importance of international collaboration in enhancing educational and academic initiatives that nurture young peacemakers, aligning with the humanitarian vision of His Majesty the King, the directives of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and the principles of the Declaration of Bahrain on on religious freedom as well as the objectives of the King Hamad Award for Peaceful Coexistence. The program is set to train 100 young leaders over four years with 25 participants selected annually. The founder and director of FIL, Kirish Raval OBE, underscored the program's importance as a transformational journey that educates and equips Bahraini youth to become global ambassadors for peace. Speaking on behalf of the co-founder of the 1928 Institute, Dr. Nikita Vid and Dr. Lucy Housequill, expressed a appreciation for the positive Bahraini-British collaboration on the specialized training program. The King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence and the Higher Committee for Human Fraternity, HCHF, signed a Memorandum of Cooperation to launch the Leadership in Peaceful Coexistence program. The initiative aims to equip young individuals with the skills and knowledge needed to promote the values of respect, a religious and a cultural dialogue, and conflict resolution. The program includes a training and educational courses on establishing values of respect and interfaith dialogue, mastering negotiation and mediation techniques for conflict resolution, and empowering youth to share their experience with future generations. The chairman of the center's board of trustees, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, hailed His Majesty the King for his unwavering support to the center's programs and activities. He also emphasized Bahrain's commitment to promoting harmony, a peace, understanding, and dialogue between religions and civilizations with the support and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He underscored the importance of the collaboration with the HCHF in developing educational programs, training courses, and joint events. These efforts aim to educate young leaders on the importance of solidarity, peace, and dialogue in addressing conflicts and combating extremism. For his part, the Secretary General of HCHF, Ambassador Dr. Khalid Al Ghaith, highlighted the strong partnership between the two organizations and emphasized their shared values and dedication to establish a regional and international peace and coexistence. We're immensely proud at Faith and Leadership to sign this 
memorandum of understanding with the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence to launch what I think is the world's first leadership for peaceful coexistence course. Uh, it's a world standard course comprising many modules that will take young people who, from Bahrain who are smart, enterprising, intelligent, kind, uh, gracious and knowledgeable and will take them from foundational levels right through to the position where they can train their counterparts in Bahrain, across the Gulf region and in the United Kingdom. So we want some of your young people to come here to train our young people and inspire them. And I think it is a defining moment for Arab youth leadership. First of all, I think it's extremely important. I think it's a big, big um, step forward. Um, the core of the agreement uh, is really about the program. And the program is trying to train young people uh, to get them to be of a cohort of young generation that promotes coexistence and tolerance at the international level. Now I think there is no better solution than working with the young people. There's no better solution to promote tolerance and coexistence at the international stage, local stage as well, but to build this sense of responsibility and support towards the idea of living together within the younger generation. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for young people to learn um, about other cultures and to learn to coexist uh, in peaceful uh, manners, especially when you see growing divisions in our country and across the, the world where we see people threatening our peaceful um, you know, ability to tolerate and respect other religions, cultures, beliefs, values. I think it's wonderful for young people to unite um, across, across the globe, especially through Bahrain and the United Kingdom, um, and to learn um, leadership skills. I think it's wonderful. This is going to generate the new set of leaders that we have in our, in our country and abroad. Bahrain's permanent representative to the UN in New York, coordinator of the Arab Group for Security Council Reform, Ambassador Jamal al rawai delivered the Arab Group's statement during the UN General Assembly on the question of representation, increase in the membership of the Security Council, and other matters related to the Council. Arawai underscored the Arab group's commitment to continuing discussions in the upcoming session and its active participation in achieving comprehensive reform of the Security Council. He underscored the Arab group's confidence that these negotiations are the only viable platform for reaching an agreement on council expansion and reform that enjoys a broad political support among member states. Arawai commended the efforts undertaken during the current session, which have developed discussions on the Security Council's reforms and the innovative approaches that strengthen cooperation and understanding among member states. He reiterated the Arab group's position advocating for a permanent Arab seat with full powers in any future expansion of the Security Council. The CEO of the Labour Market Regulatory Authority, Nebras Dalib, stressed the authority's keenness to review and develop all the services and procedures provided to enhance the work environment, improve user experience and achieve government directives and support efforts to enhance the kingdom's investment and commercial environment. And for more about this topic, we have the following statement from the Executive Vice President of Services and Business at the Labor Market Regulatory Authority, Ahmed Ibrahim Al-Arabi. 
Thank you very much for having us. The LMRA is committed to continuously improve its services for citizens and business owners. Following the directive of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, and the Prime Minister to develop 500 services across 24 government entities, we have successfully re-engineered and launched 50 key services for business owners, expatriate workers, and employers in the domestic sector. By integrating our services with the government databases, we have reduced the need for paper documents by up to 100% in some of the services and significantly cut the transaction time, especially for issuing and renewing license for employment agencies. Most transactions can be completed electronically without visiting any of our offices or any other government entities. We are also working on a new set of services to fully transfer all of our offering to electronic platforms soon. Measuring customer satisfaction is very important to us. We continuously monitor the performance of electronic services through feedback received via various communication channels, including the National Suggestions and Complaints Systems, TAWASL, LMRA Service Centers, Electronic Surveys, and Social Media. We actively analyze this feedback to identify areas of improvement and promptly implement necessary adjustment to ensure that the services are user-friendly and meet the customer's need and expectations. Our goal is to ensure that everyone who uses our electronic services feels satisfied and that their experience with LMRA is positive and convenient. The domestic worker sector is extremely important to us, especially as it is closely tied to families and quality of life. We have recently developed all the services related to domestic worker, totaling 16 services, making them fully electronically available. Those services can now be accessed through the LMRA's expert management system, the EMS, without the need to visit any LMRA branches. Transactions are processed instantly using the advanced ICI. Some of the most noticeable services, including issuing, renewing, and cancelling work permit, increasing the domestic worker seeking, changing the occupation for the domestic worker, filing absent from work reports, and paying permit fees. The delegation of the first Bahraini football team arrived in Gold Coast, Australia in preparation for the first round match in the Asian qualifiers for the 2026 World Cup. The delegation includes 27 players in addition to technical, administrative, medical and media staff. Upon the team's arrival, they began training in preparation for the match against the Australian team, as the Bahrain Football Association was keen to provide sufficient time before the match to prepare the players technically and physically until the match, which is scheduled for the 5th of September. And before we end the news, let's take a look at the latest business news in the following report. The Labour Market Regulatory Authority, in coordination with the Central Bank of Bahrain and in cooperation with the private sector, began issuing an IBAN for every expatriate worker in Bahrain. This is a new initiative added to the LMRA's initiatives to develop the work environment and ensure the rights of all parties. The initiative stems from the LMRA's keenness to raise awareness of the importance of e-banking transactions and guarantee the rights of employees and employers. Additional facilities directly support business owners, especially since this process is done electronically, which ensures the documentation of payment transactions, reduces judicial disputes on payments of wages, and speeds up the procedures for resolving the litigation file. Meanwhile, during the closing ceremony of the fourth edition of the Young Entrepreneur Tech Program, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, Iman Dosari, affirmed that investing in the human element is an essential pillar in economic development sustainability. She said that investing in Bahraini youth is an important step towards the transition into the digital economy, noting the importance of continuing to adopt qualitative programs that consolidate Bahrain's position as a regional platform for technology. The chairman of the program's organizing committee, Ahmed Buhazza, praised the pioneering role of the ministry in supporting the program and praised the youth's exceptional and innovative skills. The Kingdom of Bahrain ranked second in the Arab and Gulf region and sixth globally, among the largest aluminum-producing countries in the world. 
The economic report indicated that Bahrain produced about 1.6 million metric tons of aluminum in 2023, the same level of its production in the previous year, as the aluminum sector in the kingdom is one of the largest sources of export revenues, which reached 3 billion US dollars in the previous year. The report confirmed that Gulf Aluminum Rolling Mill, which was established in Bahrain in 1980, has an annual production capacity of more than 165,000 metric tons of aluminum products, which places Bahrain in the sixth place globally. Elba plays a vital role in simulating the national economy as it produces liquid aluminum with a purity of 99.7%, as well as rolling and extrusion standard alloys for local industries and wheel alloys, while the rest of production is exported to other markets. Great efforts are being exerted by Temkin to preserve public funds and direct support to beneficiaries and continues to strengthen its control procedures on requests for wage support by developing an integrated plan to unify all efforts and identify any violations or suspicions related to the use of support through local recruitment. Temkin continues to audit the beneficiaries of its program within legal frameworks verified through supervisory visits and follow up with the relevant authorities to take any necessary measures. It was able to conduct more than 2,000 inspection visits since the beginning of this year. Bahrain International Airport recorded outstanding performance in the first seven months of 2024, with a 43.2% increase in passenger traffic, 19.8% rise in aircraft movements, and steady growth in the air cargo volume, reflecting economic recovery and growing demand for air travel. According to official reports, from January to July 2024, the total number of passengers increased by over 13%, with departing passengers rising by 13.6% and arriving passengers growing by 9.2%, compared to the same period in 2023.